a warm good evening to you, my Transnation peeps. My TMPs. How are you doing? Oh, they're like a little pixie. I've got my ears poked out of it because I've been wearing a face mask, so I've had to pull my ears out over my hairline and they bent out at the top. So they're like a little pixie. Little pixie. Little pot of gold. Um, <laughs> sorry to all the Irish viewers. <laughs> that was such a lame impersonation. Okay, so, um, yes, I look like shit. Um, it's been a long, long day. Okay, so I set off um, from my flight from Thailand was at four past. Oh no, four o'clock is well, well. Add seven hours. That's where it get, this is where it gets confusing, peeps. Add seven hours, and at four o'clock on the twenty eighth, okay, um, it would have been maybe eleven, no, ten o'clock on the twenty seventh in the UK. So I set off at four o'clock um, on a. I've got no makeup on, so please excuse me. I'm so tired. Um, on a should have been twelve-hour flight, but it was thirteen hours. Thirteen hours on an aircraft, longest flight I've ever been on. And I, I thought that's okay. What I'll do is I'll have a couple of brandies or something like that with a coffee, uh, my sleeping tablet, and it'll knock me out for about six hours. Mm. Until they came on and said, "We are not serving alcohol on this trip." No. Oh! So, yeah, um, so I was pretty much like that throughout the whole trip. Well, maybe not like that, because it made me look like, a bit like a psycho or something. <laughs> Almost looks like one of those filters you get on uh, Snapchat. <laughs> You know the word where it gives you a big wide mouth. Um, so yeah, so I'm back in the UK now, back in a hotel. <laughs> um, nothing to write home about, uh, but still, yep. Yeah. Um, in the UK now, in good spirits, um, still in pain, but that's gonna that's gonna happen for the next three months, if not more. Um, the swelling doesn't go down and everything knits together and, and, and everything for uh, about six months. But the thing is, um, it, it's like, as hard to believe as it sounds. So you've got like 8,000 um, nerves running through a penis, if you will. Uh, and Dr. Carmel, he doesn't mess about. He likes to use all of them. But when they knit back together, it's almost like I can feel it. I can feel it knit back together. Um, and because I have hypersensitive components of my vagina, um, yes, we know which component we're talking about here. And you would think that would be extremely pleasurable, but it's not. It's extremely painful. Um, so, I think, oh God, I look so a mess. I do apologise, babes. Uh, but I'm just keeping it real. I'm, I'm giving you how it is, how I am at the time that I make the video. Mm, there it is. Um, so you're going to get no sugar coating with me, peeps. But I think, you know, a lot of people respect that. And I certainly respect you enough to give it you as it is, raw format. There we go. Um... So yeah, back in the UK, am I happy to be here? Yes. Um, I'm currently wearing a strappy top. Oh, that's kind of a bit dusty. Um, strappy top and a... Oh, okay, I've got to try and do this without flashing bits. A tartan skirt, which um, in Thailand is, is more than enough. You know, you, you go out and you're like, whew, it's hot. Uh, UK, mm, went out, chucking it down with rain, <laughs> and I've not seen rain since I, I left the UK, so uh, when I was out, chucking it down with rain, I was like, oh, this isn't fun, came back in, jobs are gone, um, so yes, gotta love that UK weather, but I've kind of missed it, I have missed it in a way, um, but, but yeah, 
Do you know, I'm, I swear to God, I've said this before, and I've, I've said it again, and I don't know why I do it so many times, but I go, um, um, uh, I'm going to have an erm counter. I'm going to try and do that. I don't think my, my software will allow me to do that, but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try, and we're going to count how many erms that I put into a video, because... Uh, I. Why do I do that? I don't... People say that because they can't think of another word to put in its place. But I have plenty of words to put in its place. So I don't know why I do it. Um, I... I swear to God this is not even... This is... I, I nearly did it again but I stopped myself from doing it. Because I'm so consciously aware of going... Um... I don't know why I do it. Is, it. is it a bad thing? Is it annoying? Is it annoying? Please leave a comment. Is it annoying? Is it a bad thing? Why do we do this? Why do I do this? Can anybody answer why I do this? Because even I don't know why I do this. Um, but I... Oh my God, I've done it again. Right, so, ooh, I, right. Oh, I nearly, I think it's because I'm trying so hard not to do it that I keep doing it. I'm going to try and rep, try and replace an erm with an intake of breath. I think that may... Um, this is going to be hard. Oh, my God. Okay, right. The next video is going to be erm free. I promise you this. Uh, I'm going to try and... <laughs> I nearly did it again, but they changed it to a I'm... Uh, I'm going to try and do... <laughs> I don't know why I do it. I, I don't know. Please, please help me. Do we need help? Do we need some form of psychiatric help? That may be the case. That may be the case. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, so yeah, just to let you all know that I'm back in the UK and I'm... Um... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> This is madness. I'm so consciously aware of that going, um, now that it's frustrating me. Uh, <laughs> I need one of those <laughs> electrocution thing that programs into the word, um, so every time I go, um, I get, I get a shock. Uh, what, did it, what does it call that? Electrotherapy, is it? I don't know. Um, Right, moving on, because I, I'm, I'm getting so frustrated with this now. I'm trying so not to, trying so hard not to say it, but keep saying it. Uh, <laughs> I am so tired. I'm going to put it down to the tiredness, because we had about um, half an hour to an hour ish traveling to the airport from the hotel to the airport then it should have been a 12 hour flight uh but it right. okay from this moment on i am going to try and so desperately hard not to say um <clears throat> so it should have been a 12 hour flight i'm going to say everything would like <laughs> i'm so deliberately worried by it. so I nearly said it, but I didn't. Yes! Overcome. Um, oh, no! <laughs> oh, I need help. So, I went to the airport, and it was, uh, it should have been a 12-hour flight, but unfortunately it wasn't. It was 13 hours. Um, I... <sighs> This is so not. Do you know? I'm. I'm so not even making this up. This is like genuinely how I talk. Is is it a bad thing? Is it? I don't know. It's annoying me. Is it annoying you? Is it annoying you? Let me know if it's annoying you in the comments below. <laughs> so, uh, oh my god, oh my god, really, really, right. 
So it should have been th should have been a twelve hour flight, but it wasn't. It was a thirteen hour flight. We must have had a headwind or something. I don't know. Uh, so now. When we got to the airport, you couldn't book your seat number. They wouldn't let you book a seat number. So uh, when I got there, I kind of played on that a little bit. Uh, and I was on, <laughs> you know, I was on the the, the middle row. Because uh, I, th I think the seats went three, three and three. Because um, it was quite a big plane. <laughs> So the, <laughs> this, so three, three, three. I was on the out, the aisle lane of the the outer side of, of the um, middle row, and I says to them, I said, "Well, I couldn't book my seat, and because I've just had surgery, I need the leg room. Is it, you know, can I upgrade to a leg room seat?" And they said, "Oh, sorry, we don't have anything available." I was like, "Okay." So I went and hobbled my way off. And there was no exaggeration. I was like really hobbling because I was so sore. It was so sore. Uh, immigration was uh, amazing. I'll tell you about that in just a second. <laughs> You're going to love this one. So anyway, I've sat down waiting to, to board. And uh, she came up to me and she says, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've managed to upgrade you. I was like, "Oh, how much is that?" She says, "No, no, no, it's it's on us. Uh, we know, we know you've you know you've just had your operation and you couldn't book the seats uh, because we needed to confirm all your documentation before we could check you. I couldn't even check in online. I had to check in at the airport because they needed to verify all the documents, uh, which increased the queues exponentially, peeps. And I'm uh, I've never seen a queue as long. I felt so sorry for the people." way down at the other end of the airport and it's a big plane it can hold a few hundred people so i uh i stopped myself from doing the um thing yes winning so uh i had to let myself down i had to let myself down at the last hurdle i swear to god peeps this is not fabricated this is not done for anybody's entertainment this is just so frustrating for me because I've tried not to say um and I've watched my videos and I do say um quite a lot uh, like uh, um I, I, just, I feel like I need to keep talking and the only way that I can replace the silence is with an um but it's so annoying right I find it annoying you must find it annoying leave a comment below is it annoying but anyway see at that point I would have put an um in I would have um but anyway, so, um, uh, no, I did that verse. Uh, oh, so that was, oh, that was slipped out. Right, so, oh, God damn it. So I get to me see, I've got loads of leg room, and who sits next, sits next to me? This lovely lady with a baby, a nine month old baby. So my initial thought was, well, I ain't sleeping on this flight. And I'll tell you what, what an absolute amazing cutie pie this 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 nine month old was. She's a little girl, uh, nine months old, and she dealt with a thirteen hour flight like a boss. Like a boss. I salute you. Um, little lady, she handled it so so well, um, and the, uh, her uh, uh, mother as well, which was very very good at English. Thai lady, she was good at English. They were going over to the UK to um, see the child's father in Leicester. Um, was it Leicester or Lancaster? It might have been Lancaster. Um, and it was so nice to see that, you know, it really was. And she was such a little cutie and. Kind of halfway through the flight, she took a, a, a like because I was making a laugh and this that. And it, obviously, I had a mask on, but I was like giving the eyes you know, and doing doing the boggly eye kind of thing. And I could put one eye into the middle. I don't know why I can do that. It's very strange, but I can do it. I don't, I'll, try, I'll try and do it now, but it's, yeah. now the pressure's on. I probably won't be able to do it. Hang on, hang on. Is that working? I don't know. 
I don't know if that's working or not. Um, but anyway, <laughs> random. Uh, so yeah, I, she was absolutely lovely. So 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 funny. She had such a good character, uh, and I, I, I managed to get some sleep on a plane. Um, so that was all good. So immigration. <laughs> We're talking about Thailand, which is the, uh, you know, effectively the trans nation, trans, transgender capital of the world. Um, so, you, you know, they see now my passport photo looks complete. Do you want to see my passport photo? OK. The, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to have a little of my drink right let's dig one's passport out and I will show you oh there it is so this is going to make you go what the hell this uh, I'm going to cover up my passport number for obvious reasons but this is my passport photo. You see that? See the grey beard? The grey beard. That is my passport photo. So as you can see, I don't really look anything like my passport photo. Mm -hmm. um, now, in Thailand, you would expect them to, to, to have this quite a lot. <laughs> so, I, I was speaking to uh, the check-in people and they went, Oh, you're going to have to sign a disclaimer. I was like, what do you mean a disclaimer? She says, well, just in case you get refused entry into the UK. I said, I won't get refused entry into the UK because I'm a UK citizen. I said that, that, you know, anything can be resolved once I'm in the UK. I said, that's not going to be an issue. Um, she says, right, well, you're all right to, to fly with us. I was like, right, okay. So I went with this supervisor and, you, and he kind of had the hump. He kind of had the arse on because he had to deal with this case. And I thought, why has he got the hump? And then when I realised how far we had to walk to get this resolved and... I, I can't walk that fast because I've just had surgery. So I'm in agony about a, halfway through this walk, a third of the way through this walk. And he looks back and I'm right behind me and he's kind of like, Ugh. and I went, you're going to have to bear with me, sir, because I've just had surgery. He's like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So he wait for me. And we, anyway, we walked out. So it, it was, you know, once he understood what was going on, um, or more how much pain I was in. <laughs> So we went to the, and it, it come up fast track. And I was like, okay, they're fast tracking me. Do they think it's going to take that long that they need to fast track me? So I, I, I meet me, you know, the, uh, the departure time for the plane. I thought, okay, that's yeah, common sense. Um, and then we went to the, oh, did it again. <clears throat> um, uh, then we went to the, uh, <laughs> we went to the, you know, you take your bag off, put your laptop and your, all your electrical items in the back and it goes through the scanner. And, uh, and then I noticed a sign on the side. It said, uh, pilots and air crew. Or was it air crew? I'm sure I read someone said pilots, but it may have just said air crew. Uh, so I went, we went through that and I had this lovely lady and she was kind of like a, an officer because she had pips. She had pips on her uh, epaulet. So I thought... Okay, um, and then the, uh, and then this other officer came over, and the next minute a junior officer came over, and I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna arrest me or something? And she says, have you got any more identification with you? I said, well, like a, an ID card. I was like, well, we don't really have ID cards in the UK unless you're a, a, a you know a foreigner. I said, I don't, I don't really know of any. And I thought, oh, bugger, this isn't going well. I said, well, I've got all the documentation from the hospital. I even showed them your YouTube channel of my transition, 
which I'm thankful that I did because I think that was the clincher. And I showed I showed her the YouTube channel. And I said, "Look, you know, day one, day two, day three, day four. I said, "Look, that that, that, that looks like my passport photo. That looks like my... and then went to day fifteen and like boom, there we go, the transition video. I said that there we go. That is, you know, the the that's that, that's me on the passport up to that point. Then that's me stood in front of you now. Um, and she was like, oh, okay, okay, okay." And then the penny drops. I was like, oh, I've got my man wallet. And in my man wallet, I've got my driver's license. But I've also got my HGV license. So I've got a CPC card. Anybody who drives HGV would know this. I've got my CPC card, which is Certificate of Professional Competency. And I've also got my tachograph card. And they've got my pictures on. So I was like, there we go. Look, look. There we go. There's ID. Three forms of ID. I even logged in to my internet banking off my phone, which requires a thumb thumbprint and a code to get into it. And I was like, look, there's my statement. It's, it's got my name on it. I was like, look, it's me. It's me. Hi, it's me. And they were like, okay, not a problem. And, we get, and I, I stood up uh, and I'd been sat down for a while and I stood up and it hurt so bad that she went, oh, hang on one moment, one moment. And she come around with like this little shopping trolley kind of thing so I could put all my stuff in it and amble down um, and, and that airport is huge like if you're from England and you think Heathrow, Gatwick Stansted Luton and it is huge this airport is absolutely mahoosive and you're not just walking you know a hundred metres I must have walked about a thousand meters to get to the gate from the security, which is the fast track. To, uh, to, oh my goodness, it was a drama. But the funny thing is, the funny thing, and now you're thinking, oh God, right, if you've had that problem leaving, leaving a country, what problems are you going to have when you're? Enter the UK. So this is what happened when I entered the UK, TMP. So we left the aircraft. We walked a considerable distance, but they've got the the really fast travelators. <laughs> see, see, you know, you can stand on them and you you. You know, you, you're going past people at speed. But if you walk, you, you're hitting Mac speed is what you're doing. Until you come to the end and you have to step off, you've got to stop walking at least two metres before the end of the conveyor and then step off very gingerly. Because when you've had operation downstairs and everything's hypersensitive... The slightest bang or bump, you feel it. You go over a speed bump, oh, you feel it. It's mm, it's not good. So I'm kind of like walking down this conveyor belt, like getting to speed. You know, I must have been doing about eight miles an hour. Now, in walking terms, that's pretty quick. That is pretty quick. Uh, it gets to the end. Couple of meters before, stop. You know, just gingerly step off, and then go ha, 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 for about five steps, and then onto the next one. Right off you go, uh, rinse and repeat. You know, so so I get to um, uh, the customs people's. Uh, uh, um, sorry, border control. I do apologise. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you a story about customs. <laughs> God, <laughs> I guess the border control, and there was one guy, and he was he, he was like obviously a supervisor or something because he had he he had pips, also he had one pip, um, and it it, it just which is military term, uh, terminology for an officer. Uh, obviously, he's not an officer, but it, you know that's a good indication that he's that he's high up. Uh, maybe above a supervisor, maybe a manager. Um, but so, we, 
erm, um, what was it with the erms? I need electrotherapy. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so we get, we get, I get us through, uh, and I gets him, and I thought, oh, he's not going to let me through. Because you could tell that he was just, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. So, <laughs> so I gets him, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be shit. Uh, so I had up on my phone, I had quick access to my, uh, day two and day eight COVID tests, which you need to get your, you need those booked to get a code to put in to get your passenger location form, uh, which is a government thing. So when you've got your passenger location form, it's got a QR code on it. They look at it. Yeah, they look at it. They don't scan it. They look at it. So I gave it to I gave me my phone. I went there. There's my passenger locator form. He's like, okay, no. Have you got your your COVID test negative? I was like, yep. Yeah, there's the from the hospital that I've just left. You know, there's the COVID. Right, okay, that's fine. No fit to fly certificate or anything. I think that's only leave in the UK. I don't know, but anyway. Um, I've done it again. God's sake. So, <laughs> so. I was like, I was like, do you want do you want to see me two and eight day COVID? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll have a look at that. I was thinking, well, you never mentioned that. I should have just kept my mouth shut. I, you know, I could have saved myself two hundred quid and not booked it. You know. Um, but anyway, no, I, I didn't want to break any rules. So, um, you know, do everything by the book, and then you know you're not going to get imprisonment or uh, um, imprisonment or a ten thousand pound fine. So, you know, for the sake of 200 quid, is what it is. So I showed on that. Uh, he says, uh, and he, he looked at my passport and he went, oh, I was like, yeah, this is where it gets really confusing. Um, I said, I've got all my documentation from the hospital. I said, I've, you know, uh, and he went, no, nope, not a problem. He says, uh, Make your way to the uh, to the end there and and give it a go. If it doesn't work there, you'll have to walk around and see. Uh, 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 you know, you remember the old school passport control when they like and he stamps your passport with a uh, you know a, a, one of, a, a stamp for the country that you're in. Well, in the UK, it doesn't work like that now. It's all electronic. You put your passport on a, a plate. You hold it on there. You put your feet on the two feet symbols on the floor and you look directly into this camera this camera adjusts to the height of view and it scans you and it scans your passport photo and makes sure that you are biologically with no blood tests involved or dna tests the person on that picture based on your your eye size the offset of your eyes the height from the end of your nose to your your mouth you've cheeks you do it takes everything into consideration i don't think it takes your hair into consideration um but i, I says well i'll give it a go but I, you know i think i'm going to end up walking over there and he was like well give it a go and see what happens so this guy went i walked up and he went can you uh go in number five please and i was like me being me just trying to be funny i was like no i want number four <laughs> and they actually cracked up and I, I thought it wasn't that funny uh, so, so I went, okay, so I went in number five, and uh, it, it computer said no, wouldn't wouldn't recognise me, uh, and and this guy just shouted, anyway, get out of number eight. I was like, okay, so I went to number eight, put it, boom, gates opened and let me through, and I thought, <laughs> clearly number eight's the dodgy one, uh, lets any bugger through. Uh, I thought, great, I could have been a terrorist or anything. No. So when I got through, I actually felt so guilty that it had let me through. And I thought, this isn't right. So before I got to uh, baggage reclaim, there was a border control uh, officer w walking up. And I said, I, and I went over and I went, excuse me, sir, I, 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 if I can just spare a moment of your time. Uh, he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. But, but what's, what's, are you okay? What's, what's happened? And I said, right, okay, so um, this is my passport photo. And I dropped my mask out and, and I went, this is me. He went, right, okay. I said, well, one of your gates, the automated gates, you scan your passport. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, that's just let me through. 
he went, no, no, no. What you have to understand is it doesn't, like, it won't take a picture of your face and then match it to the picture on your passport. He says, and this is when I found out this information, he says, it measures your eyes, it takes your offset of your eyes, your nose, your forehead, your cheekbones, your mouth. He said it, it more matches you on a biological scale than a photographic physical scale i was like okay well, that's good I, I i felt so bad that i, I just needed to mention it because i didn't want you to have a dodgy machine and then all of a sudden a terrorist comes in and kills 100 people or something and he was like no 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 not at all. It, it doesn't work like that so i was like right okay that's good see i'm you know i'm a law-abiding citizen I'll, I'll i'll you know do what i can where i can um so I, I I went to reclaim my baggage and I thought, oh, this is going to be awkward, dragging that suitcase off the conveyor belt. No, 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 no. Gets there, all the baggage, all the luggage are off the conveyor belt, lined up in a row, and my case is very, um, well, you know, you, you, you can see it's it's my case, because I'm going to show you now. Because it's got a big butterfly on it, yeah. Which I think is quite adapt, really, because... Oh, sitting down is a problem. Um, because obviously I'm a, a, I've emerged from my cocoon of a male and emerged into my female butterfly-ness. Um, so... Oh, um, why do I keep doing that? Ooh, so frustrating. So, yeah, quite adapt. But anyway... Drifted off. Rambling is what it is. So back to the story. Yeah. So um, basically, getting out of Thailand, where transgenderism is very ripe. It's the you know it's a, uh, the Camel Cosmetic Surgery Hospital in Thailand does eighty percent transgender operations. So you would think that they're used to seeing this, but even with all the documentation, they still got me to say, sign a disclaimer, which I did because I didn't care. I, you know, it's, it's like whatever. You know, I knew that when I got back to the UK, they wouldn't refuse me entry because I'm a UK citizen. Um, so and that, so that could have been, and you know, that that would have been proved at any available opportunity. So I'm not too uh, not too fast that and and getting into England was was a breeze. Now, you know when you go through the customs, anything to declare, nothing to declare. I have never, not once ever, in my life, been stopped. Never. So I'm waiting for a taxi to go from London to Manchester. So anybody watching this from the UK will realise that that's an expensive taxi. And I'll be honest with you, it was about £262 or something like that. So it's quite expensive. Uh, now, <laughs> I've never been stopped to go through it. Today, yes, you guessed it, peeps. I get stopped. I goes up to this guy... Uh, uh, walked past and he made eye contact and I was like morning was like, morning and he stepped in front of me and I was like oh shit where have you come from Thailand how long have you been there a month oh do you want to come with me I've got a taxi waiting he's waiting to <sighs> okay so went with him it's like um have you got your passport? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, uh, me medical visa. No, no, no. We just want to. And he looked at the picture, and he looked at me, and he went, "How would you like to be identified as?" And I thought, do you know what? Amazing, absolutely amazing. And I said, Miss would be amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, from that <laughs> on. <laughs> He kept calling me Mister, and he, he'd say it and go, "I'm so," and I'm like, "Do you know what? It's absolutely fine because you're looking 
at my passport photo and I've noticed you looking at my passport photo a split second before you said mister so honestly it's not a problem I, I you know it, it is a genuine mistake you're not you're not being transphobic I said it's just a genuine mistake and he's like thank you so much I do appreciate that and he did it again and it and I went, no, it's miss. And he went, oh my God. He said, I've done it again, haven't I? I said, yes, you have. He said, I am so, so sorry, Miss James. And I was like, it's not a problem. It's fine. You're looking at a mail on a passport. You know, I, I said that, that it's not a problem. Um, we kind of had a little bit of a joke. And he said, can I just, what have you got in your, your rucksack? And I, I showed him, I said, these are the things that I bought from from Thailand. You know, me, me blogging cameras, me. Uh, I got some Louis Vuitton, I was like, you know, the fake, obviously, but very good quality fake. Like, oh my God, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I don't think anybody would be able to tell the difference, to be fair, it's on point. Uh, even to the labels that you get inside the bag that nobody can see anyway. Uh, serial numbers, every, everything. It's just on point. You would never know. Uh, so, uh, it, oh my God, that's uh, twice in about five seconds. Oh dear. Um, oh, <laughs> so moving on very quickly. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So he checked my suitcase, um, I opened it up, I've done it again, oh my god, I opened it up and I said, I've got a lot of medication from the hospital, he went, oh I can imagine, uh, and I showed him everything, he's like, no I'm absolutely fine, uh, I get us a taxi, uh, and then I get us a phone call from the uh, supplier of said taxi, and she says, Oh, we normally, we allow an hour difference and then we charge £20 an hour uh, for, you know, every hour that is sat there because the, of the car parking costs in the airport is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I think it was, it was there half an hour and it was like £11. It's like, that's ridiculous. Um, so they ran, they ran me up and they said, Look, you know, the, we've allowed you an hour, but you were 15 minutes over. I went, yeah, that were customs. <laughs> so if I hadn't have been stopped, it, would have, it was only a fiver extra anyway. So it wasn't too bad. But very, very, very long, long, long journey. So, yeah, just to summarise, Thailand couldn't leave Thailand because I didn't, they didn't think that I had the right documentation, but they realised that I was genuine and they let me leave in the end. England walked through it. Absolute breeze, no problem at all. Uh, once I showed them the documentation, they didn't give a shit that I was transgender. <laughs> they didn't care that I didn't match my passport photo. Thailand did. And you would think that it would be the other way around, that Thailand would go, oh, you're transgender. Thank you for putting into our community. Uh, <laughs> economy, sorry, not community. Uh, thank you for spending tens of thousands in our <laughs> on our economy. Um, you, you do us proud. Keep doing it. You know, living the dream. Um, but no, yeah, yeah, it was the other way around. So it's really strange. It was just a strange day. But the uh, the flights, yes, was was okay. Um, just while I'm talking about flights, I, massive fear of flying, like massive. Uh, you get a little bit of turbulence and I'm in tears. And I mean in tears. I've got that much of a fear of flying. I learned how to fly helicopters. Um, which is on my other YouTube channel. Uh, but a long time ago, seven, eight years ago, you know, a long, long time ago. You never forget, but it's a great experience. A lot of money. £550 an hour for a lesson. How bad's that, you know? Uh, so, anyway, many, many moons ago. But yes, I can fly helicopters. Awesome. Uh, so, learned that because I got a fear of flying. Anyway, it was one cabin crew member, I think she must have been a supervisor or something like that, or head crew member, or whatever they defined as. But it was Ryanair, she was called Claire, 
and I was flying from Lanzarote to Manchester and I was absolutely shitting my pants to the point I'm in tears like that's the fear of flying that I had you know you hit a bit of turbulence and I'm like and you see the wings bouncing, and you're like, oh my God, it's going to break. It's going to, you know, something's going to, the engine's going to fall off. Or and I was literally crying my eyes out. I was so scared. And she sat with me the majority of a four hour flight, comforting me. And when she had to go off and do something, she got somebody else to come and sit with me. And that was with Ryanair. Now that, is going above and beyond service. They changed my seats as well, so I was sat right at the front, because you feel the turbulence less at the front. So at the back, you feel it. Um, and I hate being put over a wing, because they always put me over a wing with a window seat, so you can see the wind, you know, the wing flapping. It's almost like, pilot, Captain, switch the engines off. The wings are flapping that much. We'll just flap our way back. You know, it's crazy. Uh, but she she sat there and she reassured me so much that I felt that confident that I actually fell asleep on that flight. Um, and since then, I have not had an issue with flying in fixed wing aircraft, you know, your, your normal aircraft. Uh, and that's all thanks to Claire from Ryanair. So God bless you, Claire. Whatever you did, and I don't know what you did, but it worked. And now I've endured a six-hour flight, a seven-hour flight, and I've just done a 13-hour flight. And there was a lot of turbulence on that. We just set off, and the pilot decides to fly through a thunderstorm. Like, proper black clouds. Like... Uh, uh, cumulus stratus um, uh, no sorry a towering cumulus is, is what a thunder thunder clouds is called um, and I, it, it was and I, and I thought well that's not a good start we've got a kamikaze pilot on our hands uh, but actually it was, it was really good uh, we, we did hit a lot of turbulence but I was kind of like excited about it. I was like, oh, bring on the turbulence. Hmm? Showing off and all. Uh, but yeah, so, and it was all thanks to Claire from Ryanair. Claire from Ryanair. God bless you, Claire. And I hope you watch this video and uh, you know who you are. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that was my uh, shenanigans for the day. Oh my God, I've been talking for 42 minutes, 56 seconds. I might have to edit that down a little bit. Um, I don't know. Uh, but uh, thank you for tuning in, folks. So I'm going to be swift now. Uh, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, it really does make a difference. And I want to get to 100 subscribers. I've got 73 at the minute, and they are going up slowly. But I'd really like to get to 100 subscribers. Uh, if I get to 100 subscribers, I will do a, um, a live stream. Uh, a Q and A live stream in relation to transgenderism. Um, absolutely, any question you've got, I will answer you God's honest truth. Uh, it will be made uh, eighteen or over only because I've got a feeling I'm going to get a few questions that wouldn't be suited for the younger audience. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, also promise that I will try not to say um. Uh, and if I say, um, I will donate one pound to each viewer for every time that I say, um, I say a pound and it's not a lot of money, but I say, um, quite a lot. So you could end up just tuning in and walking away with 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got me worked on that. If I say, um, however many people are, uh, are, are watching the live stream at the time, I will send you a pound. <laughs> we'll tally it up you know just a bit of fun to try and get me to stop saying um so yes that was my shenanigans for the for the day so once again 
if you've not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And I'm going to get to 100 subscribers. Yay. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. If you've not enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs down. Please leave me a comment why. And then we can improve future videos. But for now, my TMP, my Transnation peeps, thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for joining me along on my journey. Um, it's been so exciting and there is still a lot of journey to go through um, uh, at the moment. I've done it again. Ooh! Uh, so <laughs> it's the pain of my miseries. Um, so, thank you once again for joining in. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me to have you uh, with me on my journey. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's not over yet. There's still a lot more to do. There's still uh, a lot more procedures to go through. But for now, I bid you adieu and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow for the next installment of Christiana Shenanigans. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know. Anyway, much love to you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one.